As the coronavirus started to spread worldwide in early to mid-2020, a special program called Operation Warp Speed was initiated by the U.S. government to facilitate and accelerate the production of a coronavirus vaccine. After the announcement of that program, it took about seven months for the first doses of an effective vaccine to be available for use. Since then, billions of people worldwide have received at least one dose of the vaccine and many lives have been saved. But how does it work? You may have heard that it's an mRNA vaccine. What does that mean? And how does mRNA somehow make your body better prepared to deal with a coronavirus infection? Well, let's take a look. Let's talk vaccines. How do they work? I mean, aside from their effect of providing a degree of protection against a particular virus, what's the mechanism by which they confer that protection? In this video, I'm going to focus on the COVID or coronavirus vaccine. Now, there are a handful of different approaches to engineering a vaccine. Some are more effective than others, and in part, that depends on the virus. But conceptually, they all follow the same principle. Now, before we get to that, why do we even need vaccines? I mean, if our immune system can generate B cells and antibodies to fight off viral infections, then why bother with something as seemingly intrusive as a vaccine? Well, unfortunately, when our immune system is faced with a novel virus that it hasn't seen before, it can take a little bit of time for our B cells to start to produce the right kinds of antibodies to neutralize that novel virus. And for viruses that we haven't seen before, we have to wait until the exact precise kind of antibody interacts with those new virus particles. And once that happens, it can still take time for plasma B cells to be produced and for the circulatory system to be flooded with those right antibodies to neutralize the virus in question. In the meantime, our cells, our tissues, our organs can be ravaged by the effects of whatever virus is at play. And in the case of coronavirus, COVID can cause real significant problems. But once our immune system has experienced an illness, like COVID, our second exposure to the virus that causes the disease often results in a much quicker and even a more effective immune system response because our immune system has memory. And specifically, it's the presence and the action of our memory B cells that store the information for antibodies that we've previously used to fight a disease. A vaccine works by tricking your body into thinking that you have a viral infection. This then stimulates an immune response without actually causing the nasty complications of the disease itself. This vaccine-induced immune response makes your body more prepared to deal with subsequent viral infections. When it comes to the coronavirus, an innovative type of vaccine called an mRNA vaccine is used. So how does that trigger your immune system B cells to produce the antibodies necessary to neutralize the virus? Well, to answer that, let's take a look at the coronavirus itself. The coronavirus has a genome of about 30,000 nucleotides. It's an RNA virus, which just means that the instructions that it carries to code for all of its virus parts, those instructions are made with RNA instead of DNA. This is not at all uncommon for viruses. These 30,000 nucleotides code for about 30 different proteins that are synthesized in varying quantities. Those proteins, once synthesized, all come together to form the virus particle. A small section of this 30,000 nucleotide genome, a stretch of just under 4,000 nucleotides, carries the genetic instructions for the spike protein. The spike protein allows the virus to gain entry to a cell, and the spike protein is what antibodies interact with to neutralize a virus particle. Now, the spike protein alone? Not dangerous. Rather, it's the virus particle in its entirety with all 30,000 genes and the associated proteins that 
all together makes up the virus particle. Now that's dangerous. Here's the clever part. The coronavirus vaccine consists of just the genetic code for the spike protein. Those genetic instructions are carefully packaged inside a lipid-bound vesicle. Uh, lipids, that's the same stuff that your cellular membranes are made of. The lipid vesicle just ensures that the genetic information for the spike protein is protected while it travels from the site of injection to your cells. When those vaccine vesicles get to your cells, they fuse with them, delivering the spike protein genetic instructions into your intracellular space. After this happens, your cellular machinery gets to work. The spike protein mRNA gets translated into a protein. That protein is then integrated into the cellular membrane of any cells that were infected with the genetic material carried by the vaccine. So some of your cells essentially end up having the spike protein sticking out of them, mimicking a live coronavirus particle. Your immune system then kicks in. Once a B cell's antibodies recognizes the spike proteins that you've manufactured, the B cell will differentiate and divide. You leave the exchange with a full complement of active plasma B cells that flood your circulatory system with the relevant antibody, and you leave the exchange with memory B cells that are stored and ready to be called upon weeks, months, sometimes even years down the road when your system encounters a live, dangerous coronavirus particle that needs to be neutralized. For more information on the coronavirus and how the immune system responds to a viral infection, be sure to check out the other videos in this series. And we have new videos coming out on a regular basis on our channel here, so be sure to subscribe so you can stay up to date with the latest EvoEd content. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.